This is the OTB Television Network, a service of Capital District Off-Track Betting. The mile and 36 flat. Go for one. Gets clear by two, Charon. Under the whip is second. They pass the eighth pole. Go for one. Now in front by about four lengths, Charon. His second pampered star has been eased. Go for one in front. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Down the Stretch. I'm Mark Cassano. On today's Alabama Day show, we've got a trio of guests, each looking to capture this afternoon's 136th renewal of the Alabama, beginning in just a moment with Mr. Mike Smith. He will be followed by Mr. Dale Romans, whose black-eyed Susan heroine, Go Maggie Go, will try later this afternoon. And finally, Mr. Wayne Catalano, whose sharp family tree will contest this afternoon's Philly Classic. And along the way, we will take a look at three more Alabamas of the past to the internal break. So all of that and much, much more if you stay with us for this, our August 20th edition of the program, which is being sponsored by Parting Glass Racing, Saratoga's original racing partnership. They've won two races at the meet. For information on their partnerships, visit them on the web at partingglassracing.com. Call them locally at 587-5550 or toll free at 877-722-3946. Good morning once again. Happy Alabama Day. I hope you enjoyed looking back at the great Gopher Wand win in 1990. Now, before we get to our first guest, a quick programming note concerning next week's show the Travers Day edition of down the stretch next Saturday August 27th will begin one hour earlier we will begin at nine o'clock handicappers report will go eight to nine we will go nine to ten for our Travers Day show our first guest this morning has won four Alabamas including three in a row in the early to mid 1990s and I think he's got a pretty fair shot to win number five this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, the rider of the sensational songbird, Hall of Famer Mike Smith. Mike, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Appreciate it's it. great to have you. So you got a shot this afternoon? I'd like to say so. <laughs> well, we're in it anyway. and uh, She certainly hadn't done nothing wrong so far, so hopefully we can keep it going that way. You went to see Songbird earlier this morning at the barn. How'd she look? She actually looked amazing. I hadn't seen her since uh, the coaching club. Uh, and if the way she looks now is any indication of how she's going to run, it was, it was pretty, uh, pretty incredible. I hadn't, like I said, hadn't seen her in a bit. And uh, she looked like she's put on another 50 to 75 pounds of muscle and, and uh, looked great. And from what uh, Edgar uh, told me, her, her exercise rider, I mean, she's training unbelievable. So hopefully it, hopefully it means something the way she's looking right now. What did you and Jerry talk about this morning? Not necessarily a whole lot. Uh, strategy, uh, what what we're going to do, uh, which pretty much hasn't changed. I mean, she is who she is. Uh, we we've, we've pretty much stayed out of her way uh, for just about all of her career, and and, it, and it's worked. So we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna mess with that any at all. Uh, you know, hopefully she just uh, warms up and jumps well, and, and uh, let her do her thing. Uh, she's not the kind of filly that you that you have to worry about uh, as far as you know pace wise or, or, or what you're going to do with her she runs numbers at you that's that's what that's what makes her who she is and she's going to throw up um, probably a, a decent first quarter a decent half and and then it's a matter of getting a mile a quarter but uh you know last time out in the coaching club i mean the, the best part of the race for her anyway was it was the last part so i don't see no problem with the next eighth of a mile well let's go back and take a look at the coaching club songbird is number one in here uh, mike i imagine as far as the setup the, of the race, there were no real surprises. You knew that Julian and Karina Mia at some point were going to come after you in earnest. 
talk about the effort. Yeah, being in the one hole, it was it was critical to to, to jump extremely well, uh, which she did. Uh, she actually came out of the gate really, really good, and uh, you know she was running along pretty nice. And like you said, I, I knew at some point she was gonna gonna challenge me. I, I didn't think it was gonna be quite that early, to be honest with you, because uh, as you well know, there's a long stretch here at, at Saratoga. But he 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 brought he, they brought their A plus game at her. Uh, I felt like Julian pulled the knife on me there at the at the three and a half. And <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't quite ready for that, but uh, you know she she made me run. That was the first time that that Songbird had to really dig in and and, and run. And and uh, it was great to see her actually dig in and run. Uh, man, man, she actually liked it. Uh, I think I was a little more worried than than Songbird was. But she dug right in and you know stretched it on out. And, and uh, Karina Mia. Uh, who, which was a gallant effort, but just couldn't, couldn't match her eyes with her. And towards the end, like I said, she she won kind of you know well in hand again. So she's just been just been amazing so far. We she just got to go out there and do it again. You know, uh, we take no competition lightly. Uh, each and every horse is in there for a reason, and, and each and every horse has a shot to beat us. So we're going to have to go out there and do what we do, and we've been doing the last previous nine times, and that's do our job. So there's no messing around. Did Julian and Karina Mia brush you or bump you at some point around the turn? He got right on top of her. Uh, you know, he wanted an intimidator. You know, uh, she'd never been looked in the eye like that before. So it was a great, great ride on Julian's part to, to get right up on her and see if he could intimidate her some. And uh, I think it kind of backfired a little bit. <laughs> Luckily, I was on a filly like Songbird. Did she? Uh, did she wake up a bit? Did uh, she get she, a little ticked off at uh, that point? She <laughs> jumped right in the bridle hard as soon as he got up on her. You know, which was which was good for us. It was a good sign. A lot of times uh, uh, they don't. But she did, and so uh, it was, he actually made her move forward without me having to, to really get after her too much. Now, the following week, when we reviewed the race on the show, mm -hmm. I told the audience that in my numerous decades of doing this, there are, when you get a special racehorse and they are forced to dig down yeah. deep when they're really challenged, quite often they move forward for their next race. What's your feel about that? Is there a legitimate chance that she actually moves forward off the coaching club for the Alabama this oh, afternoon? Without a doubt, I, I said that myself after the race, actually. You're, you're exactly right. Uh, a lot of times I'll either move forward or, or you'll see them, uh, you know, it kind of, you know, kick them in the butt a little bit and maybe set them back. Uh, but she's the kind of feel that, that, to be honest with you, that, that had never really had to been put to 100%. Although that you know she didn't have to be put for it for a long time, but it was a good you know sixteenth to an eighth of a mile where right. I mean she made a really really dig, uh, and it, no one's had to do that. She, I mean she's never had to do that before. So if she takes that and, and, and improves off of it, she could certainly be better. Uh, I don't I still don't believe that we've seen the best of her. So so far and and, and it's going back to the barn and getting a chance to, to look at her physically. Instead of losing weight and kind of drawing up from that race, she's blossomed, uh, which Saratoga would do that to a lot of horses. Uh, rich grass here and the water is great. And, and the hard race, you know, she fed off of it and she, she seems to have improved. Now she has to go out there and do that in the afternoon. Earlier this year, you mentioned, I, I love this, you mentioned that when you teach Songbird something new, she picks up on it very quickly. Tell us specifically the types of things that you were talking about there, what you were teaching her and what she picked up on? Well, I mean, early on she was, uh, from her first race, uh, she drew the one hole first time out. She hadn't been very, very sharp out of the gate, so we had taken her back there, to her last work just before the race, to trying to sharpen her up. And I let her know that, that I'm in business, that so we needed to leave there, and it was, it was very important to leave there, and, and man, she got it. I mean, we left her out of the one hole. She jumped like a rocket, and ever since then, she's done that. And then after she started running, and we needed her to turn off a little bit, you know, I needed to teach her when I put my hands on, you need to turn off. And trying to show her in the mornings and doing it, but you never had to show her more than once. It didn't seem like everything you would ask her to do, she would do it, and she got it. And she learned it. Now she learns. How, she knows how to turn on, how to turn off. Earlier in her career, she was very nervous. Early on in the post parade, uh, I'd hang my feet out. And, kind of coax her, get her to relax a little bit. Uh, next time, man, I just kind of hug my feet out. She just relaxed. I mean, it's just like she's just, she's very intelligent, but the good ones have that. They're not only talented uh, underneath, they're also smart, and, you know, in, in the head, and she's, she seems to do that, and she's learned uh, so much. She actually knows, I mean, she knows 
how to win a race. I mean, she knows how to compete and she knows how to jump well. She knows how to do everything we've asked her to so far. Now, again, in saying that, as you know, horse racing, I mean, she has to do it again. That's right. That's right. You have to do it again. You stub your toes one time in these types of races, and, and that's when you get beat. I want to go back and take a look at a piece of the Summertime Oaks. This was her first start in more than two months due to some illness, and she got outrun for the lead, something which a bit unusual for her. How'd she handle it? Uh, passed it with flying colors. And that matter of fact, uh, it, she focuses more when she has something to run at. <laughs> Which is even it's a little scary. Yeah, I mean she was on the bridle and, and wanted want to take it to him at, at all times I'm actually it looks like I'm laying right next to that filly, but I'm about five lengths of Sideways away from him. It's just trying to stay away from him so that I didn't take it to him too early I mean she was she she actually she likes it. She loves the competition. That's what makes her great You know, she's a fighter. I mean she wanted it she wanted to put her away right now and <laughs> Finally right in here. I said all right go ahead if you want and she just <laughs> she just I mean she did it in a matter of, of a second I mean it was crazy I mean, right here, as you can see, she's drawing away, and I, I'm still in third gear, and, and it seems like I got seven left. You know, I mean, uh, I, I hope, I hope that I do anyway. I mean, she sure gives me every indication that there's certainly always been more left at the wire than I've than I've had to ask for. So. Now we know it's one thing to sit off a 45.95 very fast half. How do you think she would handle sitting off a 47 opening half mile? She'd probably be in front. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much who she is. Yeah. I mean, that, that's that's just her natural cruising speed. And in uh, it, it, saying that, I mean, it's just who she is. I, I don't try and, and I don't try and get away with a, a, a 24, a 48, or a 49. I, I, would, I think I'd get in her way if I did. Uh, so I just basically stay out of her way, and she just has that natural high cruising speed. I mean, she wants to throw numbers at you. That's just what she likes to do. And, you know, sometimes eventually or, or down the road it could come back and, 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 and bite you in the butt, but so far it hadn't. I mean, she's been able to run these kind of numbers and still be well within herself and, and keep herself fresh and, and race fit for the next race. I mean, she had, like I said, the last time that she ran in the coaching club was a time that I thought, well, we'll see how she comes out of this. And although she was tired the next day and, and, and you know, was, which, which – Des deservingly so, she bounced right back out of it. So now I'm wanting to see, you know, what this race is, that that last race has done for her. I mean, it could put more air in her, and you could even see even a better songbird. And I'm, I'm, I'm certainly praying for that. You have had the uh, very good fortune of having ridden some anything from outstanding to absolutely great fillies in your career, including recent Hall of Famers and Yada and a Zeri, I'm going to miss some, and inside information, and yeah. Royal Delta, and Sky Beauty, and Heavenly Prize. Now, Songbird has never raced against her elders. She has raced only against her own age group. Potentially, how does she stand against those other fillies at this stage of her career? Well, at this stage, you would have to say... Without even arguing, I mean, you would you would you'd have to say that she's ahead of, of those other fillies. I mean, Zenyatta didn't run until she was almost four. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the fillies, uh, you know, didn't go on to win uh, the Breeders' Cup at, at two, and have already, you know, won nine in a row at, at this early in her age. So right now, I would say she's ahead. Now, what those fillies did in their four-year-old year and, and, and went on to do was phenomenal. And she has yet to do that it has to face males or older horses or, or anything like that so she's got all that ahead of her but you know what she's she seems to be up for the challenge i mean she 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 loves to train uh, she loves what she does uh, so i'm really excited i mean there's a good chance uh, mr porter was talking that that she'll run next year as well so so we hope that, that that's the case you know and you don't think uh, jerry's gotten to the bottom of her yet oh, i don't believe we have no i certainly don't think so well, one older mare that you may face later this year is going to face the boys later today back home in a sensational renewal of the yeah. Pacific Classic. We're talking about the great beholder for Richard Mandela going up against California Chrome yeah, going to be for our friend Art Sherman, Drew the Rail, Dortmund. What do you think of this Pacific Classic later this afternoon? On the draw... I would have to say that that uh, Beholder drew drew well. I, I like where she's at. I think Gary's going to be able to to sit the stalking trip this time. Uh, 
I think California Chrome from the rail it certainly has to jump well, has to get out of the gate, establish himself early. Uh, Dortmund's got speed, as we all know. Uh, he's going to be, uh, you know, he can't just let, certainly let California Chrome just, just walk away with the first part of the race, so he's going to be on top of him. Uh, Gary could be sitting the trip. Uh, I think you'll see a different beholder this time. You know, I think she's gone in, she's gone into this race uh, tighter, really, really ready, ready for this race. Uh, I don't believe they underestimated going into the last race, the competition, but I would think that Stellar Wynn was at 100%, and which you know that, I mean, I'm sure Mr. Mandela wasn't looking for 100% last time, he's looking for it today, so I think you'll see that today. Yeah, in fact, uh, Richard Mandela said after the race, and he congratulated the Stellar no, Wynn connections and, and, and John Sadler. So. Yeah. But he said he let Beholder get a little heavy on him. Tell our audience what that means. Well, I mean, it's like... Uh, any any fighter or anybody getting ready for a competition, I mean, you could certainly go in a, uh, a, a little heavier. I mean, you remember when Buster Douglas beat uh, you know, Tyson, right. Mike Tyson, and then he came into his next fight not near as good a shape as he uh, as he went in to in to fight him. He, he just didn't go in, you know, with all the screws completely tightened, which you don't necessarily want to do. I mean, being a great horseman that he is, I mean, he wanted her to peak. Uh, today, tonight, today, at some point, uh, not last time. I'm sure they thought. It, you know, at 90 percent, 95 percent, you could beat you could beat the bunch that he had to run with. But Stella Wynn is no is no regular little filly. Yeah, I mean, she's yeah. she's a Group One, solid Group One filly, uh, and was really ready to to take on Beholder and went at her early, as they did at at, uh, at at Songer last time out, and 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 maybe just caught her not at her best. You know, and again, not taking away nothing against Stella Wynn, but uh, I would I wouldn't have thought that that uh, Beholder would have been at her best. And I think that race is gonna really improve her. They actually ran faster in that race and then than Beholder did the following year going into the to the classics. So if that race tightens her up like I think it should, uh, you're gonna see a different Beholder. How's it feel to be back at Saratoga? Um, do memories come flooding <laughs> back when you come back here? I was blessed to come in a little earlier this time. Uh, so I was, uh, got a chance to meet a lot of friends and, and visit for a little while and, and uh, went across the street and Wanted to see the museum and see Zenyatta's plaque. She just yeah. got inducted into the Hall of Fame. So we got to do a lot of that, and it was great great to go there. They've done a wonderful job on just making that place better and better every year. And and uh, just excited about today. Uh, you know, and today's a big day, if, you know, for, for Songbird. And, and uh, Mr. Porter normally would have been here, but he's had some health issues. Yeah. So, you know, our prayers are out, go out to him, and uh, hopefully all the fans will pray for him and uh, see what we can do today. This will be good medicine. For him, Boy, if you're going to win this awesome. this afternoon. It sure would. Mike, I want to, uh, I'm going to let the audience know that um, Mike changed his, uh, a lot of his plans so he could be with <laughs> us this morning, and we appreciate that uh, very you. much. And I know yeah. the audience appreciates seeing and hearing from you again. And we want to show you our appreciation by giving you this $100 well, gift certificate. Well, thank you. Jacob and Anthony's American Grill. It's at 38 High Rock Avenue in Sounds downtown good. Saratoga. They're open for lunch and dinner seven days a week, beginning at 1130. So if you can use it, we would uh, love you to have a little meal on us and, uh, it'll and enjoy be, it. It'll have to be dinner. It can't be having lunch before <laughs> I ride today. I appreciate it, Mark. Thank, Thank you, you as always. We, you. we appreciate it. And all the best this afternoon. Thank you. Have a safe trip aboard Songbird in the Alabama. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Hall of Famer Mike Smith, ladies and gentlemen. And we are up to our first break. When we return, Mr. Dale Romans will join us as we go to this break. The 2010 Alabama. Jerry Hollendorfer represented in here by blind luck. Going up against Harvard of Grace. And it was a beauty. So we'll take a look at the 2010 Alabama to the break. Back with Dale Romans right after these messages. And they're off in the Alabama. Acting happy breaks well. Devil May Care is also right there, followed by Tis a Hit. Connie and Michael was off a beat slowly, but is right up there with the vanguard. Over to the inside, have to grace, and blind luck at the back. So they make their way for the clubhouse turn here. Acting happy, a couple paths off the rail, tis hit right alongside. Connie and Michael wide into that turn. And then the devil may care, Johnny Velasquez has her covered up and in behind horses. She's riding comfortably early on. And then have to grace toward the inside, blind luck. 
typically she is last in the early stages of the race. So they're making their way into the back stretch run here. And Acting Happy leads the Alabama field down the back stretch run. Tis ahead alongside Sitting Chili second. Connie and Michael is third. And then it's Hab de Grace running fourth. And this pace is a crawl. 49 and two fifth seconds was the opening half mile. Devil May Care has only one horse beaten, and that is stretch running blind luck. So the Field continues down the back stretch run. Acting Happy leads this leisurely field. Tis a hit alongside second. Connie and Michael remains third. Their positions have not changed since the start. Three quarters up in a tepid 114 and four. Around the far turn now. Acting Happy, tis a hit. Still head to head for the lead. And there goes Devil May Care, rocketing up on the outside. Have the graces moving with them. And here comes Blind Luck. Now they're coming to the top of the stretch. Have the grace. Acting happy, devil may care across the track with blind luck trying to catch him from the far outside. Top of the stretch, acting happy, a stubborn foe. Have the graces there. Blind luck is getting on them with every stride down to the final 16th. Blind luck, have the grace, have the grace. Blind luck, blind luck, have the grace. Blind luck wins the Alabama in a thriller. Beating have the grace in a photo finish. Acting happy was third. This is the OTB Television Network, a service of Capital District Off Track Betting. The big day is here. You've told everybody. You've dressed the part. Your heart is pounding in your chest. Your horse is rolling down the stretch. He's coming. He's closing. He's the winner. You're a winner with Parting Glass Racing. PartingGlassRacing.com. PartingGlassRacing.com. It's where dreams are born and champions are tested. Saratoga. And the excitement of Saratoga is now at your fingertips at CapitalOTBBet.com. Wager any place, anytime on all your digital devices. Watch live racing, get past performances, bet online on our state-of-the-art wagering platform. Now for Saratoga, it's Bet100, Get100. Open a new Capital Bets account, bet $100, and get $100 cash back. And don't forget to download our new mobile app, CapitalOTBBet.com. Welcome back to Down the Stretch, everyone. I'm Mark Cassano. My thanks so once again to Mike Smith for having joined us. And blind luck for Jerry Hollendorfer and Joel Rosario comes from last to nail Havre de Grasse and win the 2010 Alabama. Our next guest, well, last year he pulled off a major upset in the Travers with Keen Ice defeating Triple Crown hero American Pharaoh later this afternoon. He's going to try to upset Songbird with Go Maggie Go in the Alabama. We welcome back to Down the Stretch, Mr. Dale Romans. Dale, welcome back to the show. Always good to be here. Good Mr. to see you. Happening. As always, things well? Things are well. Well, you know, I remember a conversation we had earlier this year when you told us that you felt Go Maggie Go could be pretty special. And we're about to take a look at her winning uh, the Black Eyed Susan back in May. And as we pick it up, she is number five inside under pressure so tell us about go maggie go and the prog progress she's made well you know she got a late start and uh so I, I crammed a lot of races together trying to get her the kentucky oaks you know took her back in less than three weeks and she won the uh Gulfstream park oaks you don't see many fillies do that second star of their life that's right the most impressive race i thought was the oaks i mean she got all kinds of trouble and still fought to come back for fourth ran a big race and this was a great race and then i think we came into the acorn and I had her a little tired. And Big Sandy will catch up to a tired horse. Yeah, I, I thought that in the Kentucky Oaks, I don't know if I could say it was a sneaky good fourth because I don't know how sneaky it was, but having had only two career starts and then running and overcoming as much difficulty as she had in Kentucky that day, that showed that she was pretty special. It did. I mean, she had all the right in the world to back up and be in the mid-pack, and she just fought back, and I thought she was going to get up her second. Uh, she definitely was second best. I don't want to say we we're going to win the race, but she could have been second easily. And here she bounced out of the Kentucky Oaks. 
What I liked about, listen, this wasn't the greatest field ever assembled, but what I liked about this was she was inside under pressure every step of the way and still drew clear. That's a special horse. Well, you know, an acorn wasn't that bad. I mean, it was a fourth of grade one at Belmont Park on Belmont Day. That's still a pretty good horse. Dale, take a moment to describe her for us. We're going to have a shot of her on the screen in a moment. What she look like physically? Oh, she's a big, strong, just like most ghost sappers, big, strong filly. Looks like a coat, acts like a princess. She's just kind to be around. She's nice. I trained her mother, and we bred her, and uh, I'm a big ghost sapper fan. So we got a little lucky with that. Mentally, she's good to work with? Mentally, she's perfect. She's one of them, when the kids come to the barn, that's the one they go pet on. All right, well, off the uh, black-eyed Susan, you backed her up to a one-turn mile for the acorn. Here it is. She is number six in here. She's going to prompt a quick pace before weakening to fourth, but your feeling is she was over the top going in here? I think she was. and took, You know, she, she ran in the Oaks. She comes back in two weeks of black-eyed Susan and then three weeks to this race, and it was the cut back to the one-turn mile. She had a lot. She was up against a lot. Wasn't my best decision making, I don't think, bringing her to the acorn. But she came out in good shape. We freshened her up. She had a 58 and change work here the other day. And uh, she's ready to roll. So the two-month freshening, basically two-month freshening, from the acorn to today's Alabama was by design. Yes. Yeah, we just did There wasn't a lot of races to go jump in anyway. And so we just gave her a little time. Alabama was a soft target, and we made it. What's her best running style? Well, I, mean, I think she's got to be up close to the pace. There's a lot of speed in this race today, though, going a mile and a quarter. So I'm not going to tell the jock much. He's ridden her enough. He knows her. If she, if we, she breaks, great. We're not going to take anything away from her. We'll go out there and let her run. Of course, you know, doing the dirty work again, yeah. <laughs> against a filly like Songbird is probably not a great idea either. It's one of those things. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. I mean, if you're going to be content to run second, you lay back off over and try to beat the rest of them. Uh, that's never been our style. So you wouldn't be content with running second? No, I'll take it if she beats me. She's a super filly. But we're going to, from the gate to the wire, we're going to try to win. Last year when you were on the program on Travers Morning, you told us you had a specific plan for Keen Ice that afternoon that you were going to put him in the race, and obviously it worked out superb. It did. Any, That's, but no specific plan this afternoon? No, none at all. Let, let the jock handle it. I can't see her being worse than third, though, when they go into the first turn. What do you think about Songbird? Free. Special filly. It's one of those, uh, she's getting up there in Zenyatta territory, Rachel Alexander territory. She's a special horse. Well, we're also going to talk to you about a two-year-old you have by the name of Not This Time. Earlier at the meet, we had Eddie Keneally on, on Sanford morning to talk to him about his colt, Bituman, who went out later that day and won the Sanford. Not This Time debuted against Bituman in a Churchill maiden race, and you were the seven to five favorites, but he kind of ran like... I don't you know, know 15 to 1 shot. Oh, he missed the break. I mean, you got to throw that race out. And Eddie, I knew I was in trouble because Eddie was nervous as he could be before <laughs> the race. He asked I'll ever train her in the race what they thought. You could tell he knew he had a good horse, and he was right. He backed it up up here, and that's going to be a key race. This is as good a horse as I've ever trained right now. This is as good a two year old as I've ever had in my barn, I think. You know, he has the pedigree, he has the size, he has the mental aspect. He's just uh, on track to be a really good one. So basically, whatever could go wrong in his debut did go wrong? It did go wrong. I mean, American Farrell lost his first yes, race. Yes, that's you right. Know, his that's first right. race, not his last race, and uh, he's got plenty of, of ground ahead of him. Well, we're about to take a look at the second start for Not This Time. Um, it's an Ellis Park maiden race going a mile. He is number five in here. Talk about this. Well, you see how much better he broke. I mean... It, when you're running those short races at Churchill with a two-year-old, it's all about the break. And, uh, you know, in the long run, it's probably better not to win first time because we got to give him a month, come back against Maidens again, get the mile race in him, and then we'll go into the Iroquois or, or wait for the maturity, one of the two. We haven't decided what we're going to do with him yet. And uh, he'll be better off for it. Did this show that he learned a great deal from that experience in his debut? I think he did. I think, well, it's just, the debut was just about breaking. After that, he kind of was pretty professional. 
But you see what a strong field that was. You can't spot them five lengths and make it up. But uh, Robbie told me after this race, he called me driving home. He said, the first one since curling make the hair on his arm stand up. He said when he smooched to him, he just exploded. You know, with the last eight and 11 and four with him, got gearing down. He went the last quarter mile of this race. Now, obviously, the early pace was steady and on the conservative side. But the final quarter mile here is 23.33. That's pretty solid time. Give it to me every time. You know, we're, this is just a really good horse. I like sitting here watching him. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who might say, wait a minute, you know, he was nowhere to be found at Churchill. They caught soft company at Ellis. Is that a mistake to say that? It is, because you look at how many good horses are staying behind down there now and breaking their maiden at Ellis Park. I mean, I think the last six horses I've run in the Kentucky Derby were down there. It just is an easier way to enter their career, and if they're as good as we think they are, nobody cares if they broke their maiden anyway. And you'll see Steve told me he left a lot more down there. Kenny left some down there. They were all in the race. I mean, some good people. His dam is Miss Macy Sue, who was a very good sprinter, and he is a half to Liam's map. She's a better broodmare than what she was race horse. Yeah. I mean, uh, Taylor S., the second foal I had, she won a stake. She was a superstar. Uh, she just got hurt and got off track. So this, she's produced three for three. What's he look like physically? What's he look like? He's the kind you want. He's a big, strong, great colt. My other, my other favorite fire, Sire John's Causeway. Him and Ghost Sapper, they can get you a good, rugged horse that'll run long that uh, just seems to stay around. All right. So how would he come out of the Ellis Maiden win? I haven't been back down there, but all my people say he's super. They say he's doing great. So I'm going to fly down there and watch him work and then uh, head back up. So either the Iroquois or the Kentucky Jockey Club? No, the Futurity of Keeneland. Oh, the Futurity of yeah. Keeneland. And it's, it's going to be kind of hard. First, we thought we could do both, and, but they, Churchill started a little later this year, and it's only three weeks between the two races. So we'll have to decide what we want to do going into the Breeders' Cup if we was to win one of those, whether we want to go run a Futurity and have less time in or run an Iroquois and have more time into the Breeders' Cup. But haven't decided yet, but we'll figure it out. How's the schedule here in New York in the fall? I know it's not two turns, but is there a stakes he could run in at Belmont in the fall, well, yeah, which would be better spacing? There's really no need to, though. I mean, if a charity's 500,000 grade one, win in your end. The Iroquois are winning your end. They're both nice races. We'll just stay there in our backyard. Enough experience? Oh, I think so. That'll be a third race. Not right. Many of them have more than that, you know, two-year-olds. Okay. So we won a Futurity last year with Brody's Cause on his third start. And this horse is falling right in his footsteps. Before we let you go, you've got a couple of horses uh, tomorrow and Monday. Hopefully, with a weather forecast, the races will still be on grass because they're both grass races. In tomorrow's sixth race, um, you've got uh, Perfect Saint. Tell us about Perfect Saint. Uh, you know, he's a decent horse. He ran a nice third at Churchill for 50, same kind of race, got him back on the grass. He can step up and run big. And Monday in the second race, it is a marathon on grass. You've got a happy match whose only previous turf start on paper doesn't look like much. That's why I was going to correct you. Not both, of, both of us don't want it to stay on grass. I'd like to see it come off. Okay. They're probably right. back down a mile and a quarter. He'd be pretty tough in there. He looks good in there on the turf. If he, you, know, you have to give him one second chance to make sure he doesn't right. like it. He's, he's just a course that's getting better all along. I told Terry Finley, his owner, the other day that he's probably the least accomplished, decent horse I've ever had at this point in their career. But I think he's poised to really do well. All right. Well, as always, we, uh, we thank you. We appreciate your time. And uh, we want to say thank you by giving you this $100 gift certificate to Jacob and Anthony's American Grill. Thank you. 38 High Rock Avenue, downtown Saratoga. They are open seven days a week, lunch and dinner, beginning at uh, 1130. So whenever you have some time, enjoy it on us. I know... See, I remember this. Even at my age, I remember these things. Last year, you said, I'll give Tammy $10 of this, and I'll keep 90 for myself. That's all How'd she that needs. She, oh, she doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't need anything. I think this year, I might sell it for 50 and bet it on my filly. This afternoon? This afternoon. Should have done that last year with Keen Ice. Yes, of course you yeah. should have. Good luck this Thank afternoon. You, with Go Maggie. Good, to be here. Good to see you. Dale Romans, ladies and gentlemen. We are up to our next break. On this August 20th edition of Down the Stretch, when we return, Mr. Wayne Catalano will join us as we go to this break, the 2011 Alabama.
It was a race which propelled the winner to a championship. So we'll take a look at the 2011 Alabama to the break. Back with Wayne Catalano right after these messages. Settle down, ready for the start. And they're off. Plum Pretty breaks well. It's Tricky's right alongside her. Down toward the inside, Royal Delta. So they move under the line for the first time. Plum Pretty down on the inside, Royal Delta on the outside. It's Tricky. At the back of the pack early on will be Pinch Pie, St. John's River, and Inglorious at the back of the pack. And it's a tight pack that arrives at the clubhouse turn. Plum Pretty in front. It's Tricky going a bit wide there. So it is. Plum, Plum Pretty on top. Royal Delta second on the inside of it's tricky. He was very keen to go on here. First quarter was 24 and two fifth seconds. Farther back in the field, pinch pie fourth down toward the inside. Stretch running St. John's River has one horse beaten, and that is inglorious. So it sets up this way down the back stretch run with the Oaks winner leading the way. Plum Pretty on top. Coaching club winner. It's tricky running along in second. Royal Delta down inside third. Pinch pie fourth. Late running, St. John's River, five lengths from that lead. And the Queen's Plate winner is last here, about seven or eight from the front. And Glorious is the trailer, less than five furlongs to go. The half was up in a very sensible 49 and one-fifth seconds. Plum pretty to catch with the half mile to go. It's tricky now, giving her cue. And they round the far turn here. Plum pretty by length. It's tricky, still called on for run. Just a link behind with three furlongs to go and a would-be championship on the line. And then it's Royal Delta back running in third. Pinch pie. And then St. John's River and a long way back to Inglorious. Inglorious has dropped better than 12 links from the lead. And the field turns for home in the Alabama. On the outside, it's tricky. And Plum Pretty digs down. They're going at each other with Royal Delta coming to them. Less than a furlong to go. And Royal Delta takes the lead and pulls away. And Royal Delta goes on to win the Alabama convincingly, beating its tricky by five and a half lengths. Long shot, pinch pie, finish third. Then Plum Pretty, St. John Street, Inglorious, never fired today. This is the OTB Television Network, a service of Capital District Off-Track Betting. Shh. Can you hear it? It's the sound of excitement. Something we infuse into every grape that goes into our exceptional full-bodied wine. That was closer than I thought it would be. Now, if you'll excuse me. Fourteen hands, where great times are made. In a recent study of some of the top online wagering sites, Capital OTB won big in total player rewards, far surpassing some of the best-known wagering sites in America. While other rewards programs simply offer you points redeemable for gift cards, Capital OTB's rebates are paid to you in actual cash. Plus, Capital OTB gives you full and immediate access to your money. So if all you're getting now are points and gift cards, join Capital OTB Player Rewards today and get cash back. Visit CapitalOTBBet.com and sign up today. Welcome back to Down the Stretch, everyone. I'm Mark Cassano. My thanks said to Dale Romans once again for having joined us. And Royal Delta for Bill Mott, Jose Lascano by five and a half in a performance which helped her win the Eclipse as champion three-year-old filly of 2011. Final guest this morning brings the very sharp family tree into this afternoon's Alabama. We welcome back to Down the Stretch. Mr. Wayne Catalano. Wayne, welcome back to the show. Thank you, sir. Nice, good, nice good to, to see you. Nice good to, to see you. All right, let's talk family tree. As we take a look at a piece of her victory in the Iowa Oaks, and for our audience, as we pick it up, she is number seven, third on the outside. Tell us about your filly and the progress she's made. Well, she's been training great, and obviously, you know, her race has been very, very well, and you know, this last race she ran, she had a perfect setup for her, and, you know, we, we was excited with the way she come into this race, and uh, she proved us right and run a very, very good race. 
Wayne, she is a very consistent filly. In fact, she's never run a bad race on dirt. She hasn't. She's been uh, there every time. I mean, it's the kind of horse you like to have in the barn. You know, she's uh, she wins the big races. She's a check getter, and she's always trying. Yet she began her career on turf. <laughs> Why was that? Well, you know, Mr. West and Benny wanted to run some horses at Kentucky Downs. The purses are so big yeah. over there. So we picked a couple horses out that we thought would, you know, could win over there. And uh, she was one of them. We was, uh, that day we was lucky. And we was right. And she got there. Take a moment. In a moment, we're going to have a shot of her on the screen. Take a moment to describe her for our audience. What she looked like physically. She's a well-built filly. She's put together very nice. She's not real, real big, but she's built just about like you want one to be built. Uh, beautiful filly, nice moving filly. Uh, does everything you ask her to do. Very nice to be around. So mentally, she's, she's good as well? She's very good. She's very nice to be around. She's a sweetheart. Well, off the solid victory in the Iowa Oaks that we just watched, you ran her back in just 16 or 17 days in the Indiana Oaks, and as we pick it up, again, she'll be number seven, fourth on the outside. This was a pretty quick turnaround, plus in between, she threw in a bullet work. Did that mean that she was doing exceptionally well? Well, she ended up in this race because she threw in that, that work out. She came out of the other race so well, and she worked so great in between. That wasn't our intentions. Uh, but the way, way she worked, the way she was acting, and the race was right there, and I thought, you know what, we'll take a shot here, and everybody was on board with me, and it worked. So it's great when a plan comes together. It worked, it worked extremely well. She <laughs> ran very well, very professionally in here. Wayne, is her best running style stalking the pace? I would say it is. She likes to run at horses, you know. Um, Mr. West um, picked that up and, you know, instructions that, like, she'd like to have some horses in front of her in these last couple of races. And he was spot on with it. And uh, we gave the jockey them instructions. And then, like I said, worked out and the plan comes together. It's always great. How'd she come out of this race? Very good. She's doing great. Uh, we're happy to be here. And, you know, obviously we're running against a world champion filly. Uh, but, you know, if you can get second in this grade one, it's probably a feather in the Phillies cap. Yeah, I was going to say, without going too much on a limb, I think you probably could have found a slightly easier spot than this afternoon. What do you think of Songbird? Well, she's a great filly. We all know that, you know. And these horse racing, they got to line them up in the gates. And, you know, everybody's got to go over there and get their race. And they all got to run their race. And uh, the connections want to take a shot in here. And here we are. She's been training at Keeneland. When did she arrive at Saratoga? She was here about five days. At, and, and she's gotten to a feel for the racetrack. How, how'd she handle things? How's she, she acclimated? It. She loved the last couple of days. I trained her over here on the track. She galloped over it, and she was very eager yesterday trying to uh, go a little faster than we wanted to. So we was happy with the way she was training. Now, you had named Florent Giroux to ride her this afternoon. He's ridden her a couple of times. But he's not going to be able to ride. What's going on? Well, initially, the agent contacted us and said that uh, he was going to have a ride because, uh, you know, he's, he was scheduled to ride a couple of graded stakes, and this was one of them that we can get him on. So we went with him because, uh, you know, he rode at the time before, and, you know, Drew and Frenchie and they all the boys are in there, so we thought we'd stick with, with Maru. But... Uh, it worked out very well for us. We got Johnny Velasquez, so we're very happy with that. So Florence got he 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 got suspended at Del Mar, and that's that's caused kind of a chain reaction here. Um, Johnny's never ridden her before. Does she have any idiosyncrasies? Is she a difficult filly to ride? No, she'll be hopefully land right where we want her. You know, in the catbird seat, and if she runs a race. We're looking to get there. Um, hopefully, if we can, when well, then we get second. So, uh, yeah, if I said to you right now, <laughs> sign would you up. like to be sign second? Me, yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> she going to be stalking the, the pace? Yeah, I, I would think so. Uh, definitely, hopefully, uh, you know, there'll be a couple of them in front of her. You know, we're not going to chase the filly. Well, uh, hopefully somebody can do that for us. But we'll see how it plays out. Johnny what? knows what to do, so we'll give him a leg up and... It's in his hands. Yeah, well, he's visited the winter circle a few times in his yeah, career, right. so I think he should be okay. 
Um, You've done a heck of a job. You and your staff have done a heck of a job with her. She's a hard Thank trying, you. very, very nice filly, and we're looking forward to her running this afternoon in the Alabama. Wayne, thank you as always for having joined us this morning, and we want to show our appreciation by giving you this $100 gift certificate oh, thank you very to much. Jacob and Anthony's American Grill. It's at 38 High Rock Avenue. It's in downtown Saratoga. They're open mm -hmm. seven days a week, lunch and dinner beginning at 1130. So before you leave town, we hope you'll be able to use it. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Wonderful. Good luck Thank this you, afternoon sir. with Family Tree in the Thank Alabama. You, sir. Appreciate it. Wayne Catalano, ladies and gentlemen, and we are up to our final break. When we return, we're going to look back at a couple of two-year-old stakes from the week past, and we'll look ahead to the upcoming stake schedule. As we go to this break, 2013 Alabama had a distinct local flavor. Favored Princess of Silmar was owned by Schenectady native and Linton High School graduate Ed Stanko. And this is the race that Ed so badly wanted to win. So we'll take a look at the 2013 Alabama to the break. Back with more right after these messages. Fifty Shades of Hay a bit unsettled. And they're off in the Alabama. Toward the inside, Montana native between horses. Carnival Court has some early speed. 50 Shades of Hay right up and on the pace, and farther back gets Princess of Silmar, who's running along fourth, a little eager in the early going here, and a big break back to Galloping Giraffe as they move into the clubhouse turn. So it's Carnival Court who is the leader here. Carnival Court on top. Montana native comes off the inside for a little running room there. But right next to her, 50 Shades of Hay. And looming in behind them is Princess of Silmar on hold in the early going here. A wide margin back to Galloping Giraffe as they make their way to the back stretch run. The first quarter in 23 and 4 fifths seconds. Carnival Court on top. 50 Shades of Hay on the outside. And Montana native. They comprise the vanguard here. Looming in behind is a would-be champion, Princess of Silmar. The half was an ordinary 48 seconds flat. There's a huge chasm back to Galloping Giraffe. So down the back stretch they go. Still a trio of front runners here. Montana data between horses. Carnival Court toward the bail. Fifty shades of hay on the outside. Sitting chilly in the patient hands of Javier Castellano. Princess of Silmar yet to do any running. There's a half mile left here in the Alabama. Around the far turn they go. Carnival Court, Montana native. To their outside, 50 shades of hay. And there she goes. Princess of Silvar is mounting a bid. She's forced to go toward the outside as they make their way around the far turn. Princess of Silmar has picked them off. One, two, three. Princess of Silmar has seized command at the top of the stretch. And the field turns for home. Princess of Silmar on top. Carnival Court giving way. 50 shades of hay on the outside. Princess of Silmar turning it on here in the stretch at Saratoga, opening up by four lengths. 50 shades of hay is second as they come down to the final 16th. They're coming down to the line. Princess of Silmar ran like a champion this afternoon and wins the Alabama decisively over 50 shades of hay. Carnival Court was third. This is the OTB Television Network, a service of Capital District Off-Track Betting. Come on! I want sales reports on my desk by Monday. Whoops. My bad. Love racing? RTN brings you every live simulcast on your home television, plus live video streaming and race replays on your PC and mobile devices. To order, visit RTN.TV. RTN, a breed apart. Hey, race fans, head down to the all-new Clubhouse Racebook and get in the game. With live horse racing on more than 250 flat-screen TVs, state-of-the-art wagering terminals, fantastic food and drinks, an amazing Vegas-style atmosphere with seating for nearly 900 of your closest friends. Conveniently located at 711 Central Avenue, right off exit 5 of I-90 in Albany, the Clubhouse Racebook is the better choice. 
Welcome back to Down the Stretch, everyone. I'm Mark Asano. My thanks once again to Wayne Catalano for having joined us. And Princess of Silmar for Todd and Javier and Ed Stankel won the stakes. He so badly wanted to win the 2013 Alabama. All right, a pair of stakes for two-year-olds over the past week here at Saratoga, beginning with a rescheduled Adirondack for Phillies. It was run yesterday after being rained out last Saturday. Number seven, Libby's Tail from Rudy Rodriguez, was the dollar fifty-five to the dollar favorite. For the call of the Adirondack, here's Larry Colmas. Off in the Adirondack. And Libby's tail broke to the outside coming out of the gate. It is No Nabella who goes out to the early lead. Silver Tony goes right after early. These two speed off from the others. Romantic Music is next. Libby's tail running in fourth on the outside. And then it's Olive Branch in fifth, ever so clever, is sixth on the outside. And Dial Me is at the back of the pack early on here. The first quarter moving along in 21 and four fifth seconds. And Silver Tony is the leader on top by a length and a half. No, Namella has been switched to the outside to be second moving for the far turn. Break of another two. Olive Branch is getting going ever so clever, getting into the mix from the inside. And Libby's tail is moving now with a three-wide burst near the front runners. And Libby's tail is closing strongly on the far outside. The half was 45 seconds flat. They are coming to the top of the stretch. No, Namella turning for home in front. Libby's tail went wide. Silver Tony cuts the corner. Olive Branch is behind them running in four. The furlong to run. No, Namella still going strong with a furlong to go. And then it's Silver Tony, Libby's tail, Olive Branch on the inside, and ever so clever, but they're not going to get No, Namella. No, Namella in the Adirondack pulling away by about six in the end. No, Namella for Todd and Javier stalks a fast pace set by Silver Tony then draws away from that one to handily capture the Adirondack. Nona Mella had broken her maiden at Monmouth in her second start and last, then came right back with a very solid performance in the Adirondack. Now, the Adirondack was the fourth stakes race for two-year-olds at this meet. No New York-based horse has won any of those four stakes. Read into that what you like. Todd Pletcher has won both of the graded stakes for Phillies at the meet with two different Monmouth shippers. Now, this past Sunday, males went postward in the Saratoga Special with recruiting ready the 45 cent to the dollar favorite. But it would be Florida Invader Gunivera rallying from last while benefiting from a four-ply early speed duel to upset it 9-1. to one. This victory gave trainer Antonio Sano his first ever stakes victory at Saratoga, something which has happened to numerous trainers at this meet. Javier Castellano was aboard Gunivera, who is scheduled to wheel back for the hopeful on September 5th. Well, that was last week's action. Let's now look ahead to the stakes action here at Saratoga over the next week. This afternoon, a grade one stakes doubleheader with the Alabama and the rescheduled four-star Dave, the Troy stakes as well. Tomorrow, the Lake Placid and a rematch of the one-two finishers in the Belmont Oaks. Catch a glimpse for Mark Cassie, who has not lost on grass in a very long time and time in motion for Jimmy Toner. The weather forecast for tomorrow, not great, so we'll have to see how the turf condition plays out in the Lake Placid. On Monday, it's the Summer Colony. Next Wednesday, the Johns Call. On Thursday, the New York Turf Riders Steeplechase Handicap, as well as the Risk Averse. Next Friday is New York Showcase Day. Six stakes for the New York Breads, and then next Saturday, the big one, it is Travers Day with an 11.35 first post. Naira is limiting attendance on Travers Day to 50,000 paid admissions. The Travers should be a wide open race. 
exaggerator, the Preakness, and Haskell winner figures to go postward as the favorite, but I think it should be a very contentious race. The personal ensign, and this should be a beauty next Saturday. One of the things that people often overlook here at Saratoga, going a mile and an eighth on dirt, which the personal ensign will be, are post positions. I think it is critical. You do not want to draw too far outside with that very short run to the first turn. So the personal ensign should come up a wonderful race. The sword dancer should come up another victory for Flincher. Hopefully, if you're looking at it from the eyes of Chad Brown, Flincher will get <laughs> a little safer trip than he did last time here in the Bowling Green. The Ballston Spa hopefully will mark the return of Lady Eli. Unbeaten, but the most important victory she's had is battling back from laminitis. This would be an incredible thing to see Lady Eli make it back to the races. She has been training quite forwardly for Chad Brown, and we are really looking forward to her coming back. The Forgo going seven eights. Will Arnaud Delacour bring back AP Indian, who looked so good earlier at the meet in the forego, the King's Bishop. Seven eights for straight three year olds. That should be a fine race as well. And then there's the ballerina. And Karina Mia, who gave Songbird her stiffest challenge to date. It appears that Bill Mott has chosen to go against older fillies in the ballerina rather than face Songbird again. I think that is a very wise decision. So next Saturday, Travers Day, with a first post of 11.35. And because of the early post next Saturday, we've got a change in our schedule. The Travers Day edition of Down the Stretch next Saturday, August 27th, will begin one hour earlier at 9 o'clock. Handicappers Report will go from 8 to 9. We will go from 9 to 10. That's next Saturday for our Travers Day edition of Down the Stretch. There was a major announcement yesterday as far as a retirement. Terrace, a grade one winning sprinter, has been sold for breeding purposes and has been retired. She will be bred next year to Curlin. When she won the grade one on Derby Day at Churchill, I thought she would be the premier filly and mare sprinter of 2016, but it does show you sometimes how difficult it is to keep them sound. Simon Callahan had done such a fine job with her, but Terrace has been retired. All right, time to thank all the folks who helped get this week's Alabama Day show on the air. Here at the Saratoga Racecourse, our associate producer, Julie Hoxie, Brian Dorenzo, and Nick Richards. Back in the control room in Schenectady, Pat Peretta directed and handled pre-production. Dino Contanacci on audio. Special thanks to this morning's guest, Mike Smith. Again, Mike did an awful lot in changing his hotel reservations to get here to Saratoga so he could be on the show this morning. We appreciate that very much. Thanks also to Dale Romans and Wayne Catalano. And thanks to our sponsors, Harding Glass Racing, Saratoga's original racing partnership. They have had two winners at the meet thus far. For information on their partnerships, visit them on the web at partingglassracing.com. You can call them locally at 587-5550 or toll free at 877-722-3946. And our guest segments have been sponsored by Jacob and Anthony's American Grill at 38 High Rock Avenue in downtown Saratoga. Open every day for lunch and dinner, beginning in about a half an hour at 1130. 
And as always, thank you so much for having joined us this morning on Down the Stretch. Enjoy Alabama Day here at Saratoga. Have a wonderful weekend and a terrific upcoming week. And from all of us here at Down the Stretch, we'll see you next week at 9 o'clock. service of Capital Off-Track Betting.